Uh, Richard Jakwa is joining me now. Uh, he's the NDC agent's supervisor for the printing of ballots for the election 2024. Uh, good evening to you, Richard. I appreciate you talking to us uh, tonight. But first, tell us the NDC concerns regarding the printing exercise. We've had a, a cursory uh, look at those concerns outlined, but really, you, you know your concerns. Explain them to us. Are you saying I should reiterate my concerns? Uh, no, I'm not asking for a reiteration. I'm asking you to explain where are you getting these concerns from. For instance, you talk about overvoting. Where is that from? Oh, excuse me, over overprinting. Where is that from? Overprinting. I think uh, you are misconstruing what I said. Uh, where where you got your information from? Right. So then, uh, what so I then said what, was that you know uh, you know what, Richard? Let's scratch it. What are the concerns? Good. The concerns are that our agents for the various printing houses are inadequate. Judging from the volume of work that is at each of the printing houses, the various phases of printing that are in each printing houses, and the way they have been, they play the printing houses operational, uh, the printing rooms have been sectorized. It's virtually humanly impossible for one person to cover all the facets of printing and be able to check for anything that is uh, untoward. And those are our concerns. And this is completely different from previous printing, where the EC allowed two minimum of two agents per shift. We run three shifts per day because the printing houses, when they start printing, they print for 24 hours non-stop. Mm -hmm. So you need three shifts to be able to monitor all the printing to protect your interest. Mm. Because in this game, there's no trust. It's about checks and balances. So now if you decide to reduce our agents from two to one, and then the, the machines are, they are printing the ballots after printing they move a constituency that they've printed to serializing, which is a different machine in another different place, even though in the same building, but in a different section. Whilst you are serializing those that you've already printed for a particular constituency, another constituency printing has also started by the printer again. So printing for one constituency, serializing for one constituency is going on simultaneously. Then the one that is finished, the machine that finishes with the serializing, they move it to go and do cutting, sorting, mm -hmm. binding, all those other processes. They are all going on. One human being can monitor all because they're in different places mm. within the printing house. So there are loopholes created. But if there were two, as has been uh, was going on, the two of them. They can monitor properly. If one is to go and urinate, another one is there as a backup to check. If one is to go and eat, another person is in there, inside there as a backup. If a supervisor arrives and he calls one of the agents to come out for briefing from the printing room to come to the reception or car park for briefing, there's one inside there as a backup. But EC decided to take that backup out and make it one-one, stressing the agent and creating loopholes. Yet our opponents, because they are in government and they have state institutions behind them, you've given all of us one one agent, but they have a backup of bringing national security operatives, two from national security, two from BNI, formal and, and now NIB, formal of BNI. And, and what did so they now, come there to do? That is the question you must be asking the EC. And these two, these people, so in total, there are four in a, per a shift, added to the one agent of MPP, making it five. I see. Maybe they so are there for your. So we are It would seem so. Your short change, you say, but we perhaps change. Perhaps this, uh, these uh, national security operatives are there for for the protection of all 
present uh, at that printing house? Okay, I'll answer that question. Uh, what, what you are talking about, I'll, I'll, I'll clarify it for you. They are not there for any protection because in this game, there are four stakeholders. One, the police for security. And they come armed. And they are neutral body. They come for security for the printing to protect everybody. And they are the primary uh, institution for that job. Followed by the printing house followed by the political parties, and then the EC itself. So there are four stakeholders in this printing business mm. all over the years. Good. Now you decide to come and be smart enough to reduce our agents to one, create loopholes, and then you back the government by agreeing to let them bring national security and BNI to back them up. So in the printing room, they have this two institutions who have more personnel than the stakeholders themselves. Mm. I see. You see, and you and I know very well that it is a political party that forms a government. And right, so, so, what so, is so, amazing Richard, to me... I hear what is amazing to you, but uh, what problems does that cause for you? Uh, tell us how it makes your work difficult. While we are handicapped and loopholes are created, they have enough men pursuing the same political and power agenda to cover their loopholes so the battlefield is not leveled. Right. For instance, if an MPP supervisor comes and calls his agent out of the printing room, the BNI and, and national security operatives are there to cover them up for any loophole, for anything that happens inside. If they are to go and urinate or go and eat, which they cannot do it inside the printing house, and the man has to go out, they have BNI and National Security Operative inside there to cover their government interests. And not let nobody deceive you that government is different from MPP. <laughs> Very well. Uh, it's not different from MPP. Richard, it's Richard. the same party that forms the government. Richard. So we are saying that level the playing field. Very well. Let's Richard, have two, two Richard, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, what I, you know, hold your fire for me. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll conclude this conversation. You don't go away. Welcome back to Ghana tonight. Let's wrap it up with Richard Jaffa, who's been raising concerns on behalf of the NDC regarding the ongoing ballot printing exercise. Richard, you were making the point about how it would appear that there's no level play field despite the Electoral Commission's uh, decision that there should be one agent per party. Has this come to the notice of the Electoral Commission? Because they say that the process is very transparent. Uh, yes, I've, uh, it has gotten to their notice because uh, I confronted Mr. Uh, Asante uh, Kisi about it, Mr. Kisi about it. And his uh, excuse was that that he wanted to decongest the printing, the printing house, uh, uh, the, print, the printing floor. And that's why he reduced it from two to one. And that mm -hmm. it, uh, the previous ones were a convention and it, they, it, it is not a law. So what you're trying to tell me is that it's a convention, it's not binding. I see. So he can change it as and when he as and see, let me give you an example. As I'm talking to you now, I'm talking to you from InnoLink. I'm talking to you from InnoLink boardroom. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm sitting right now talking to you. And this afternoon they were doing bargain in their vault. And when they are doing bargain, it means they are bagging all the booklets that they have finished printing and ready to be sent to the to the to the, to the regions. Now our our single agent has to, had to go into the vault. He was there for hours. They are counting the fifty book the fifty booklets, the hundred booklets, the twenty five booklets, the ten booklets into a bag for each constituency, and then they will seal it pack them down for easy to move them to the regions. The man was inside the vault for hours alone. While he was in the vault, which is outside the printing floor where the machines are, it's in also the vault is in a different compartment, different section, right. locked. When you enter there, you can't come out. Mm -hmm. 
Whilst he's there doing that work, they are printing ballot papers, uh, serializing them, cutting them, sorting them. Everything was going down, down the machine room while the man was not there for hours because he cannot divide himself into two. So whilst he was in the vault doing that bargain and was there with the MPP agents and the other party agents, right? the National Security and BNR, they were in, down there. So whatever they are colluding with the printers to do, my agent will not be able to see mm. because he's not there. That is what I mean by deliberately orchestrated to create loopholes so that they can exploit. Very and well. that's why they bought the national security and BNI operatives there. And those people, they don't even carry name tags. Mm. Only lamination they've hung on their neck. It, no it, name, it, Richard, no picture. Richard, I'm afraid we'll have to end our conversation here. Let's pick it up again. We'll put a pen in it, pick it up again uh, tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank Richard, you. Richard Jakba is uh, NDC agent supervisor for the printing of ballot for the 2024 uh, general elections. It's time for me to go. Remember that Key Points begins at 7 a.m. tomorrow. At 2 p.m. on Sunday, join my conversation with, uh, you know, first Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Joseph Osewusu. Uh, we talked about the Supreme Court versus Parliament, you know, debacle we, we face right now. We also talked about the... Techiman South incident, the fact that it hasn't been conclusion up until now. Explosive interview. I say that all the time, and I mean it all the time. So make sure you tune in to Hot Issues Sunday, 2 p.m.